if we're given a first order differential equation, uh, we have a, a couple of different options of, of how to handle it. Uh, our preferred uh, method to handle it would be to actually find a, an explicit or an implicit solution to that differential equation. That's what we call solving it. We would actually get the exact solution to the differential equation. However, that's not always possible. We can't always do that, unfortunately. Um, some differential equations, just for whatever reason, are very, very difficult to solve, or some of them are impossible to solve. So what, what do we do if we can't actually find a solution to a differential equation? Well, if it's first order, we have a couple of backup options. One backup option we've already spoken about in the last video, we can approximate what the solution is using what are called slope fields. And this is a graphical technique. Uh, without going into a lot of detail, basically, if it's first order, you can put a graph of the differential equation on the xy plane, and you can actually see what the solution curves look like uh, for that differential equation. Uh, the downside is we can't actually write out who those functions are, but uh, at the very least, we can see what the solution curves look like. And so that, that's one way. Uh, we do, how, however, have another way to approximate solutions, and that's what we're going to look at in this video. Uh, this is called Euler's method. Now, Euler's method is not graphical like slope fields. This is more computational. What we'll be doing is we'll actually be generating a, a list, an iterated list of points that would be very, very close to the solution curve. And I'll show you what that looks like here in, here in just a moment. Okay, so let, let's say we have a, a kind of an xy plane here. Let's say there's some first order differential equation, you know, like, like we're accustomed to. And let's say this is its solution. Here's the solution to that first order differential equation. But let's pretend that we don't know what he is. Let, let's pretend he's hidden. Let's pretend that we don't, we don't actually see it. Okay. Um, now I know Euler's method is not graphical, but sometimes when you're explaining things, pictures help. And so I'm going to show it to you in, in terms of pictures. Um, but then when we actually do the math, it'll actually be more computational and there won't be any graphs. So anyways, yeah, let's say this is our solution curve, but let's pretend that we can't see it. And let's say somebody gives us some initial condition. They say your solution curve has to go through this point and, and it does. Okay, so that, remember this was, was the real solution curve and it went through our initial condition. Here's what Euler's method is going to do. It's going to slowly start generating point after point after point. It's this iterative method that, that slowly spits out a table of points that are all close to the solution curve. So you do one iteration of Euler's method, it will put, put a point somewhat close to the curve. And then another point close to the curve. And then another, then another, then another, then another, then another, and so on and so forth. And kind of the, the longer you go, you get these points that are very close to the curve. And so the idea, the idea is this, is that if you did not have the solution curve and you just had the points generated from Euler's method, you would still get, you know, kind of a rough idea of, of what the solution curve would look like because it would be very close to all these points. Now, is this curve going to be exactly the same as the, um, the solution curve? No, probably not. Uh, there is some error involved, but nevertheless, Euler's method will get us very close to the solution curve. And so we, these points will, will show us um, points that are uh, around the solution curve. So, so a really, really smart idea. Now, how, how does it work? How do you actually get these points? Well, that's, that's going to be the meat of this video here is what, what I'm going to explain here. Uh, so let's say you had a, a point right here. And let's say this was the initial condition. We'll call it x sub 0 comma y sub 0. So over here, I will write um, x sub 0 equals x sub 0. Don't worry about why I'm doing that. I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, and over here, I will write uh, y sub 0 equals y sub 0. And we will call this the start. This is the start of our program that's going to run. All right, now our goal is to find some points farther down the line that are close to the solution curve. So ideally, in a perfect world, I would find points like here, and here and here. Unfortunately, nobody has discovered a way of finding those types of points. Um, 
so unfortunately we're going to have to rely on an approximation but it's actually a pretty good approximation here here's the idea that the, this idea is based off of uh, tangent lines you probably are familiar with tangent lines from back in like calculus one or whatnot if we pick a preset um, defined length to step to the right in in equal intervals uh, let's say let's say like right here Okay, I'll even kind of exaggerate how far away this is um, just for illustration purposes. If, if I call this x sub 1, my next y value, my next y value, I would love to find this. That's not possible. What I will be able to find, however, is this point. Now, do you see how this point is close to the solution curve? That's why it's an approximation. All right, so th if this is x sub 1, this will be y sub 1. So let me see if I can mathematically figure out, so I math mathematically figure out who this guy is. Who, who is x sub 1 comma y sub 1? Well, uh, x sub 1 is pretty simple. x sub 1 is going to be my old x value, my old x value, plus that predefined length that I was stepping to the right. This distance here that we decided on, it's called H, okay? H is called the step size. This is called the step size. So we'll have X sub zero plus H, right? Now, Y sub one is gonna be the more difficult one that we're gonna to have to talk about. So how high is Y sub one? Well, basically it's the height at Y sub zero plus the extra amount, plus the, um, the additional amount that is risen from here to here so let, let's let's look at that uh, very closely here if you'll notice you can very naturally make a right triangle uh, out of, between these two points where the hypotenuse is the uh, straight line between them now let's look at these three sides of the the right triangle here um, what's the length of the base can you can you see the length of the base the base has length h right this is the step size um, this is what we're looking for. If I could find that, that that would be fantastic. I would I'd be really excited if I could uh, if I could find this this amount here. So uh, I'll tell you what. Let me let me make some space here. I'm going to erase this just so I have a, a little space to work. Um, now you'll notice um, this differential equation here. If the differential equation is dy dx equals little f of x, y, what this guy could tell you would be the slope at any given point. And so if you plugged in, you'll see where I'm going with this in a minute. If you plugged in x naught, y naught into the differential equation, I think you would agree with me, it would give you the slope of the pink line, right? Because that's the slope at x naught, y naught. It's the slope of the tangent line. But what else is the slope of the tangent line is rise over run, right? Isn't it also rise over run? So you kind of have this question mark. That's not very formal mathematics. I apologize for that. We could call it like capital A or capital Z or you can pick a letter for it. But um, it's this unknown height divided by H. So when we're looking for the extra height, the extra height to add to Y naught to get up to Y1, then how much is that? How high is that? Well, it's that, what I have labeled as the question mark, but we have a formula for that. Would you agree with me that this is H times F of X naught comma Y naught? Hopefully you agree with me. All I did was I took this H and I multiplied it to the left-hand side, and that was the, the extra height there. Okay, so I, I hope that makes sense. Um, that little portion of the video right here, you might want to rewind that and watch it once or twice just to let all that kind of sink in. All right, now once we're here, right, here's where we are currently. Once we're here, how would we get to the next point, right? How would we get farther up the curve? You, a student very well might have a, a very valid valid question. They might say, well, Devin, I always thought like in Calc 1, when you had a tangent line, didn't it kind of separate from the curve and the approximations were really bad after a while? Yeah, if you look over here, you see these are separating. But Euler's method doesn't have that fault. I'll, I'll explain why. Let's look at the next point. X sub 2 equals, how would you get to the next X coordinate? Well, it would be X sub 1 plus that same step size again, all right? And then how about your y2? 
Well, the Y2, we would start at Y1 and then it just adjust the height from there. But, but check this out. This is what's brilliant about this. Um, what we're going to do is um, to get this new change in height, it'll be H. It'll be H times F of not X sub 0, Y sub 0. I don't want to use the old oldest slope. I want to use the most updated slope that I have. And remember, this uh, differential equation can tell you the slope at any point that you want. So why don't we use the most current data? The most current data, I'll plug in this point into the differential equation and it will redirect me, it will redirect me to be more accurate, uh, a more accurate approximation. So we will be plugging in uh, f of x sub 1 comma y sub 1 for the most updated slope. So that, that's the idea behind, uh, behind Euler's method. And you can keep this going, you can keep this going for as long as you want. So the final step we would write x sub n equals x sub n minus 1 is the last guy, the previous guy, plus h, right, plus h, plus that step size. And y sub n would be the last y value, y sub n minus 1, plus the extra height, which would be f, I'm sorry, h rather, times f of x sub n minus 1, comma, y sub n minus 1. And this is what we call Euler's method. It generates a table of points, a table of x, y points that are close to the solution curve that's constantly updating. It's constantly updating to give you the most accurate answer uh, possible. Now, I will admit, I will admit the error does start to grow over time, but it's slower than you might think. It, it stays a fairly good approximation for some time. So here we go. Euler's method would be, if you have a first order differential equation, with a given initial condition, you have to have an initial condition, then this is what we call Euler's method. Um, this is what you need to memorize. Um, put this on a flashcard or do whatever you need to do, but um, memorize this. This is super, super important to, to know. And, uh, and, and again, what it does, it just generates a table of values that are uh, a table of points that are also close to a solution curve that goes through a certain, you know, uh, given initial condition. So I know we didn't do an example in this video, and I know examples usually help solidify concepts in your mind. So um, if you go into the next video, we'll actually work out one of these examples from beginning to end, and hopefully that'll help tie everything together.